Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access to Power, and today I wanted to show you a third method of how to sequence starters on and off. In the last two episodes, I showed you the traditional method, I showed you a varying method, and now I'm gonna, going to show you another method. Uh, one thing to understand about motor starters or motor controls, there's a lots of ways to do certain things. Uh, and I want to show you various different ways so you get an understanding uh, of motor controls, a deeper understanding of how it works and what you can do. It's all about switching. That, that's really what it's about, how switches work, how circuits work. And so today we're going to go over that third method. And so let's get right into it. All right, here on my board, again, I've put everything back into, into a traditional uh, three-wire start-stop. And so I turn off my turn on my power, uh, release my e-stop, and I can turn on any starter at, in any order, turn off any starter in any order. And so it's right back to where we were when we began. And so now we're, I'm going to show you this third method. Let me hit my e-stop, turn my power off and we're gonna flip our board around. And this time, what we're gonna do is we are going to use our auxiliary contacts to feed our other button. So we're only gonna have one, we're gonna have an emergency stop, we're gonna have our stop for motor number one. Uh, we are going to uh, not use our stops for motor number three, uh, two and three. And so I'm gonna pull this wire off, and I'm gonna pull this wire off, we're not going to use those stop buttons. And what we're going to do is when motor number one is running, let's get a little bit of wire here. When motor number one is running, we are going to energize the start button for motor number two. So I'm going to use a normally closed contact on motor number one. Let me wire that up. And then that's going to come over. This is a unwieldy, unwieldy wire here. It's gonna come over and I'm just going to temporary this in here. And cut a piece. And so that'll take the place of our small little jumper there. And let me remove this jumper on the start button for motor number two. And we are going to land this with our holding contact. And we're gonna do the same exact thing from motor starter number two. We'll come up, come over, and we're going to take this to motor starter number two, and that's gonna feed our start button for starter number three. So we're gonna land that. And then one final thing, we have nothing on the other side of our normally opens. So we are going to run power to this side of our normally opens, but I want to run it from the other side of my emergency stop. So I'm going to come over and one last wire, because I want my e-stop to control everything. I want, I want it to turn off everything. So that's why I'm not going to my breaker. I want the e-stop to turn off everything. And I'm gonna come across like this. Well, maybe I'll just come across like this. So we can kind of train that wire. And then I'm also gonna have a jumper to both starters. So let's take that wiring. And uh, of course, if you're building a panel, you're gonna to wanna to clean that up as much as possible. But this is all for demonstration purposes, so you get an understanding of how this works. We are going to feed both sets of contacts here from our e-stop. So it's power on all the time on the top side here. If our e-stop is not pushed, the top side of each of these normally opens will have power. All right, so when the top side always has power if our e-stop isn't pushed. When motor starter number one comes on, it will feed power to the start button on motor starter number two. When the motor starter number two is on, it'll feed power to our 
start button for motor starter number three and it'll allow those to operate in sequence. Let's flip this over. Getting unwieldy. And we'll turn the power on. Turn our e-stop on. And now we cannot start no, no motor starter number two. We cannot start motor starter number three, but we can number one. And now we can, can't can do number three, but we can number two. And now we can number three. And if we turn the stop button off, they all turn off. So now they start in sequence. And that's how you sequence in the third method, uh, sequencing motor starters on and off. And so, again, uh, that this isn't the method I would I would prefer. I would much prefer the first method I showed you. If you didn't see that video, I'll leave a link to it above so you can see um, how a, a more traditional sequencing start stop is done. But um, that's just three different ways that you can sequence motor starters. Uh, in in motor controls and so hope you enjoy these videos if you do give us a thumbs up uh, like our video and uh, push the bell notification to get notified whenever we put out more content and until the next time have a great day